uh, on all of this. So give me one second here. Let me also start sharing my screen before I forget to do that completely and hit start recording. So thank you all for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Real Next Marketplace and uh, what's new, what's changed, and how to get started with it. So we'll go ahead and start at realnext.com, and I just want to kind of preface this with uh, what to do if you do get stuck or you have anything that you would like to see changed. So uh, first off, if you have any issues at all, if there's any uh, problems with your account whatsoever, when you go to realnext.com, there is a contact button at the top here. And when you click on that, it'll bring you to a contact us form where you just need to fill in your name, email, phone, subject, and a message about what it is that you're needing some assistance with. So that's gonna be the quickest way to get in touch with us as of right now, as with any new release, we have a higher than average call volume. So uh, calls might be a little bit longer to get through as we can actually do multiple, uh, multiple tickets at once, but it's pretty impossible to do multiple phone calls simultaneously. Now, if you do have a feature request you would like to submit to us, something that you'd like to see changed or something that we should add to the system, by all means, uh, when you're in Realnex on the portal here, if you click on a little light bulb button there, you'll get a little feature request option where you can just enter the description of what you're wanting to see and hit send. And that will get sent to us so we can uh, start making changes that uh, our customers want to see. So I just wanted to start off with that if you do get stuck or have something that you would like to see in the system. So without further ado, on the left pane here, We've made a few changes and you can see with the big uh, new option there that uh, marketplace is one of the larger areas that we've changed. We've actually written a new listing platform, e-market platform and search platform from the ground up using the, the two products that we had previously. So uh, if you've been using Property Line or Buzz Target, all of your information from those different platforms are going to show up in the new marketplace now. So. Uh, there are four buttons that will take you to various places in the system. The Marketplace button here, uh, when you click on that, will take you to the uh, dashboard for your listing stats and email campaign stats. The Listing button is where you will go to add listings or edit your currently existing listings, as well as sending eMarkets from here. So from here you can also click the Create Email Campaign or select multiple listings to do a summary email using the button at the top. The search button is going to bring you to the Realmax Marketplace search. Pretty self-explanatory to search for listings, search for wants, uh, for sale, for lease, and so on. And the eMarket button will take you to your eMarkets dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the listing tab here. and. Uh, kind of give you a tour of this, how to use it, uh, how to edit your listings, add listings, and so on. So first off, if you're not seeing all of your listings, by default, it's only going to show you currently listings that are either marked as active or draft. So there's a status drop down at the top, and when you select that, you'll see the different options there where you can also turn on or off off-market properties, sold properties, leased properties, properties in contract, or you can just quickly select all to see every single one of the listings in your uh, marketplace listing platform. So we see here that added one of them that we have in contract. This one is sold. So that's where those end up showing up now. Uh, you can also use the filters at the top to change the order that these appear in. Uh, you can switch it to a list view, making it a little bit easier to select multiple listings simultaneously to create a summary email or to just go through and change the status of any that you need to change the status on, as well as see the information quickly at a glance. Uh, you can also filter by certain types of listings, whether it's for sale, for lease, space wanted, or investment wanted, as well as do a keyword search. So you can, for example, just show any that are in Las Vegas. Oh, that's actually just going to be for status, I believe, right now. That'll be recorded here momentarily. Now, in addition to showing your listings, this also works on a company level. So uh, company administrators are able to go in here and see both their listings, which is going to be the default view, or use the drop down at the top left to view my company listings, showing you all of the listings for everybody that you have in your company. 
Now, if you should be set up as a company administrator but do not see that option, uh, just use the contact form on the website or shoot us an email at support at realnext.com and we can get that set up for you. So that way you can, from here, do emails for all of the different agents on your team, uh, as well as edit the listings for any members of your team as well. So to add a listing, there is a orange and orange plus button on the right hand side here. When you click on that, you're going to get be given two options. First off, you give the property a name. So we'll call this, this is the property name. And then you select the listing type, whether it's a listing for sale, for lease, if it's space wanted or investment wanted. The latter two are able to be then searched by other agents who might have a new listing and be able to find everybody that have search criteria for their investment or space that they're currently looking for and have a way to connect multiple agents together so they can find each other based on their clients' needs and clients' haves. So in this case, we'll go ahead and do for sale. And then when you hit create, it's going to open that listing up for you where you can then enter in the basic details of the listing itself. At the top, you enter the address for the listing. So we can, and it's by default gonna search in your general area as your browser can usually tell a basic idea of where you currently are. So in my case, I'm in Arizona, so it's showing me addresses in Arizona. So I can just select this, 2092 uh, West Christina Avenue. And then you can also undisclose the listing address by checking this. So it'll still show up in searches, but it won't show the exact location to people searching for this listing. Next up is where you can add photos to the listing as well. So you can just click the upload listing images and you can either drag and drop files directly from a Windows folder here. Let me just go ahead and bring a folder over here. So we've got a lovely property photos folder here. So then you can just drag and drop directly into that section to upload listings, or you can hit browse to find listings as well by using that method. Once you've added any photos that you want to add, you just click upload and those will begin to upload to your account. Now, if you wanted to change which order and which one shows up as the primary photo, this button right here, adjust image position, when you click on that, it'll show you the different images and show which one's one and which one's two. And you just drag and drop the different photos in the order that you want left to right. Once you do that and hit save, it'll change it to this lovely dirt lot for you. Well, or whatever photo you actually had in there most likely. Also here, you can click here to have a link to the real next deal room. So it's easy to just create a deal room directly from the listings that you have already in the real next marketplace. Uh, more information on that can be found on our knowledge base as well as uh, by clicking on deal room on the left hand panel. Next up are the different fields of information on the property. So any fields that are marked with a red asterisk are required fields. So you do have to include a price. So let's say 1.5 million and property type. So those are the two fields that are required. However, it is possible to also make it to where the listing price is undisclosed. So it does have to have a listing price, that way it can show up in searches, but it does not actually have to show the exact price when, uh, when selecting that. So once you have the required uh, fields, when you hit the save button, it'll also tell you that there are recommended fields with missing data if you did not enter those. So if we go back to edit, we can see exactly what those fields are. Those are the ones marked with the blue plus. That'll be land size, building size, and cap rate. By the way, if you do want the price to be undisclosed, that's also at the top here where you just check that checkbox next to the price that you entered and that will set it to undisclosed so it will not show up on the, uh, on the searches or when someone views your property online. So you can then enter in the building size, the land size, and the cap rate and any other fields that you wanted to as well. So once you've entered everything that you want, you hit save and if you just want to uh, go ahead and go through with it, you can just hit publish, which will take you back to your listings. I'll actually go ahead and skip that for right now. Well, actually, no, I'll go ahead and save this draft. So next we've got on the bottom, 
overview fields, which includes the property description, area description, and highlights. These are for blurbs, allow you to kind of uh, give it a nice formatting as well. So you can actually set the font, the size, bold letters, and so on. Uh, details is going to be more in-depth information, whether or not it's built yet, you're built, you're renovated, and so on, as well as features and amenities for the listing. The finance tab will show you financial information, the commission rate, commission comments. Um, now, of course, all of these fields are uh, are optional, so really it's a matter of entering in what you want to on the property. And then you can also upload specific attachments or attachments that you have at a specific URL. So when you click on upload attachments, you can then click add documents and attach a file directly from there as well as an attachment. And then once you've added any that you want to add, you just hit save and it'll actually show you all of the documents that you've uploaded as well. So you can use that as a way to upload floor plan PDFs, um, any other type of PDFs for that matter as well. If you have like a listing brochure, you can put that in there as well. So once you've got that, you can hit save and then finally, if you are doing this listing with another agent or multiple other agents, you can use this assign agent on the right hand side and assign the different users on your team. So this will show everybody in your company that's on the system as a selectable user. So for example, if myself and Andrew have this listing, we can then assign Andrew as an additional agent, we can also do assign Matt as an additional agent and so on and so forth. Uh, Maximum of two additional agents, though, per listing, so a total of three agents yourself and two other agents, or uh, three agents in total if you're adding this for uh, another user as a company admin. So once you've done all this, we can then just hit save and save here and publish. So once we've done that, we can go here to back to listings and we will now see that listing in here and because we hit publish it'll automatically show up as active now if you need to ever change that uh, from active to either draft or one of the other statuses you can use this drop down here draft active in contract off market or sold deleted will completely remove it from your system and so you want to be very careful when you're doing that and make sure that you absolutely 100% need to delete it. If not, use one of these other statuses like off market to make it unsearchable. Now with for lease listings, oftentimes you'll see something like this where you only have the option to change status or delete listing. So with lease listings, you have to also have a space in that listing in order to have that listing be searchable. So you can click edit listing there and you're going to see a screen very similar to what you see on the uh, on the for sale listings as well but at the bottom you'll also see a section for spaces so the space itself needs to be actually selected on the uh, uh, on there and then you can click publish to make that space searchable so there's actually two parts to any four lease listings in order to make them be searchable. If we go click back to listings now, we should now see Alexander Retail Office Building for lease is now marked as active. Now, when you click on the change status, you'll see the different spaces that are available there. And so you can turn on or off the availability of those specific lease spaces there. From here, you can also create wants. So just do this, space wanted. And my keyboard has a tendency to type double. And then we can do space wanted here. When we hit create, it's gonna look remarkably similar, but different types of fields, of course. So this is where you can enter the minimum and maximum lease rate, space size, building size, lease term, uh, whether or not it's negotiable and so on. So these are all going to end up coming up in space wanted searches so that when an agent has a new space that they uh, are looking to start leasing, they can go into the system and find everybody who has space wanted posts in there that match the criteria of the space that they're adding to the system. Same thing goes for investment wanted. Um, you can search for anybody that has an investment wanted and enter in the details of the 
property that you have and it'll show you all of the users that have an investment wanted posted for that matches those criteria. So from all of these, you can then go to your dashboard or my listing stats to see what which of your listings have been viewed, how many times, uh, how many inquiries there are, how many people have sent you messages on it basically uh, directly from this screen. So you can keep track of when the last time each of your listings was updated, how many times each of your listings has been viewed, and how many inquiries you've had in total. Now there was a question, if we have more than three agents on a listing, is there an option to add more? At this time, there is not, but if that is something that you absolutely do need to do, I this is exactly what I would uh, suggest using the feature request for. Um, I'll actually, I will bring that up to the development team as well, but the more people we have uh, asking for specific features, the quicker we would be to get on that immediately as you know, the more customers that we need to uh, assist with uh, changes, the better. So uh, if you do have anything that I say is not currently possible, please just hit the feature request button on there and just send a quick message to us. We'll make sure that goes to the development team so we can figure out how, like what the scope of that is and, uh, and so on. But three agents is exactly what you could have in property line before. So a lot of the uh, functionality on here was copied from the, the different systems like that. All right, moving on to e-markets. So to create a new e-market, that's all gonna be done from your listings as well. So you would go back to your listings here, and when you hover over each of the different listings in your system, you'll see a little email button on each of the different properties there. So for example, let's say we wanted to create an e-market for Alexander Retail Office Building for sale. We simply click on that button there, and that'll bring us to a screen where we have a few different options. Now, if this is your first time coming into the system and you've never sent out an e-market, you won't see the My Save Templates option as that'll only happen when you actually do have a template that you've saved. So the two options that you'll see initially are going to be Upload Flyer and Single Listing Templates. Upload Flyer allows you to upload a, a photo, either a JPEG or a PNG. So you can simply click Add Flyer. Let me just see what I have one of these. I know I've created one for this. There it is. And so you can upload the flyer here, which is going to ultimately end up being the body of the email that gets sent out. So once you've uploaded the photo, you can simply hit save and then next. And that will take you to the email editor where you can make any changes, uh, change the photo that you have here, or even also have the photo be a link that sends them to whatever website you want to. So you just double click on the actual photo and you can click on the link tab here and enter in a URL. So I can just put realnext.com there and click OK. So what that'll do is when someone opens up the email and they click on the image that was uploaded, you can then it'll automatically go to the link that you requested on there. From this screen, you can also save this as a draft or send a test email to yourself to see what it'll ultimately end up looking like. Now I'm just gonna backtrack a second and go to the single listing templates option. So from here, you'll have three different options as of right now for listing templates, a property description template, property description and features, and an area description. So I'll just go ahead and select the property description and features one here and select next. And that's gonna take us to the same screen automatically. The what you see is what you get email editor. So by default, it's gonna put a photo at the top, include the property name, the property address, and then any features that you want as well. So if you actually had property features entered into the listing, those would show up here. However, you can also just put your cursor in there and click and type what you want to show up for the property features. You can also remove different uh, pieces of information that you don't want. Like let's say we didn't want to include the building size, we could simply do that. Uh, you can also go and add additional photos as well. So let's say we want to just get rid of that property features and have a photo show up here instead. We can then go to upload, choose a file, go to those property photos, and we can include a dog in a bowl of ice cream. So once we do that, we can then hit send it to the server, and that photo will then show up in here. Hit OK, and from here we can also 
then let's actually make that a little bit smaller, like 200 by 300. There we go. And so on. So you can also edit your address here. Uh, the company logo will automatically pull out of your account, whatever you've uh, uploaded to there, which is in the My Settings, My Company section. Uh, you can also add a second agent if you don't have one on the listing itself, but want to add someone else here, or you can use that space for whatever you are needing. Uh, you can also include smileys, apparently, insert special characters such as uh, it's useful for adding things like trademark, uh, copyright symbols, and so on. Uh, and of course, you can also edit the font itself. So for example, let's say we wanted to change this to, oh, no, we're not that bad. We're not going to change it to Comic Sans. Let's go with Lucida Sans Unicode. And then change the font size as well. Well, that would be helpful if I actually had the text selected. Uh, we can also make things bold and so on. So the editor at the top is going to be similar to you know programs like Microsoft Word or any other text editors really that allow you to uh, modify the font and text styles. So once you've selected and created the template that you want, you can save this as a template. So that will show up on that screen. We'll call that webinar template two and hit save. And of course you can also send a test email to me. So if you do need to uh, you know, stop working on this period for a brief period and come back to it later, you can also hit save as draft and that will take you out of the system to where you can then go back and edit that down the road. So you can then click on the edit email campaign draft. So this ends up showing up under the my email campaign or my, yeah, my email campaigns button there. So that you can always come back into here and click on edit email campaign draft and pick up where you had left off. So when you hit next, you'll get a preview of what it's going to look like. Perfect. Hit next. And so next we have the options for distribution, either sending to your own private contacts, which you can upload through the My Contacts section here. And we'll delve into that briefly after we talk about this. Or the Real Next community, which are going to be like the e-markets of old through property line, where you can send either a CBSA, which is roughly the equivalent of an MSA, a specific state or send it nationally. It'll show you your listing preferences, which is going to be uh, differentiate who ends up seeing these emails, as well as the criteria, the size of the building, the price of the building. You can then customize who the email is coming from and who the reply to is on the email. And finally, you can either have the email e market itself send immediately, or you can schedule it to send out at a later date. Uh, the one thing is you do have to set, set it for at least one hour in future. So from here, you would then be able to click next and send it out. Now, if you go to private contacts, you're going to see the different groups that you have in my contacts in real next. Year. So uh, we did save this as a draft, so we can always come back to it momentarily. So we can then click my contacts and see the different contacts that we have in the system. Right now, we've got a total of 81. So from here, you can either one by one add contacts to the system by clicking add contact and entering in the details. Again, any field with an orange asterisk next to it is going to be a required field. So the only required fields in this case are gonna be first name, last name, and email. You can also upload the contacts by clicking on my imports at the top. So instead of just adding the contacts one by one to the system, you can add all of the contacts from a given Excel file into the system as well. So when you click on My Imports, the folder button at the top there, and click New Import, the first option that you need to select is the entity. That's what type of import. So when you're importing contacts in order to email out to that list of contacts, you select Private Contact as your entity to import. Next up. We'll go here. Let me just find a spreadsheet that actually has contact details in it. Should have one pretty quickly available. Realmax.xlsx. And then a client unique import key. So the import key is really just you need to give the import itself uh, a name so that you can actually re-upload the same list of records later on down the road and use it to update the contacts or update the listings in the system 
rather than just add them all brand new. So from here, we can just select, I've done this one before, RxCRM. And then you can either select an existing data map, which I don't currently have, or we can create a new one. So we'll call it Real Next Contacts. When we hit Next, that's going to bring up the map to where we can tell the system where each one of these pieces of information comes from. And it will do its best to automatically fill in if the name of the field here on the left side matches exactly with one of the columns in your spreadsheet, which is what these are in the dropdown, it'll automatically map those for you. So we see first name, last name, business phone, company, city, state, and country all automatically selected. We can then select zip for zip code because it isn't identical. You can also select a website. And of course, email is going to be your most important field. Now you can also add a specific group directly from here. So we will call this webinar 104 since that's the date today. Once you've selected all of your fields, you can then click import and it'll tell you which fields are missing just to give you a note. It's not gonna stop you from doing anything. It just wants to let you know what fields could still be filled in. So take a quick glance at that and make sure none of the important fields for you are in there and click yes. Once that's done, it'll then show up in my import section here where you see the import name, what type of import it is, what the status is on it currently, which by default will be submitted immediately for that, how many successes there were, how many partial fail failures, errors, and the total number processed. So this actually should show up in the next few moments here, although we are making changes on the system, so it might just take a little while before doing that. But once you've uploaded your contacts, we can then go back to my email campaigns. And let's see, that's, we'll go to the created date, do it the opposite. So that Alexander retail, we can then click edit email campaign draft and go back and continue working on the email. Click next once again. Next once again. And we now see, oh, actually it looks like three contacts have uploaded to that webinar group too. Now we can select that. I'm not gonna wait for the remaining eight to go into there for right now, but we can do that and then hit submit to start sending the email out. So once you hit submit, that's going to submit the email for approval, in which case we'll just make sure that everything looks copacetic and send that on its merry way. And that will take you then to the uh, uh, to this screen here where you can see your different emails. And we see that currently that email is pending. Uh, it shows you which campaign type it was, whether it's private or public, the date it was sent, the status, how many reaches, opens. Of course, those won't happen until after the email itself sends out. So this is where you can go to see your e-market stats or your company e-market stats. So this will show you all of the opens and clicks on emails in a specific time frame. The time frame at the top here where you can select, let's say we wanted to go back instead to August 4th to 10-4. And it'll show, we see that we actually got five clicks on one of our emails that we sent out on August 21st. It'll show you the total reaches how many opens there were in that period, and how many click-throughs there were in those emails themselves. All right, and um, I am actually waiting on questions till the end of each section, which is right now. That way I can easily kind of uh, break this video apart into uh, different, uh, different videos on each of the different uh, sections. So that was, uh, that was the basic walkthrough on eMarkets, but now I do see there were a number of questions here. So are there specific dimensions that the flyer needs to be to display properly? Uh, I don't think there's actually any specific dimensions that the, the actual file needs to display. It'll end up just displaying the actual photo that comes in. Uh, the real test is going to be, will it sh is it larger than your screen? In which case, you'll probably want to shrink down the file itself, but you can you can actually do that simply by going to, let me just find one that, uh, let's go back to listing. I'll just create a new one real quick here. Oh, uh, actually, I'll come back to all of your questions in just a second. I forgot about the uh, summary email. So in addition to sending a single eMarkets, you can actually select multiple listings by using the checkbox at the top. Let's say we wanted to select these three, and we wanted to send an e-market on all three of these listings. 
you'll see a create summary email button at the top. So when you have two or more properties selected and click create summary email, instead of the single listing templates, you'll get the multi-listing templates option here. So at which point you can click next here and edit your email appropriately. So it'll actually put multiple listings into the email there directly from there with the basic information, the price, the size, uh, the location, and any features that you have added to there, but I haven't ever actually added any features to any of my listings. Uh, after that, it becomes identical to any other e-market that you're sending through the system as well. Okay, back to the question. So there was a question on the dimensions. So when you do the create email campaign and use the upload flyer and add flyer, there was a question about the dimensions on that. So really the idea is it just needs to fit in what is going to be an average user's uh, email window. And most email systems will actually automatically resize that for you as well. But you can actually go into the system and change the dimensions automatically. So when you go to the next and click on the, uh, you've got the editor here, you can double click on that photo and actually alter the width and height directly from here too. Uh, you can also have it have a border around it of however many pixels you want uh, and also include horizontal and vertical space as well. You can also, if you want to have that photo be left or right aligned as well. So let's say we wanted this to be 600 width it'll automatically uh, scale the height with that for you as well. So when you hit OK, probably going to be about the same because that's about the size that I included that, but then you'll see that. And your best bet is to always just send a test email to yourself to see what it actually displays as. As email systems are very rarely perfect at getting it 100% right because different email browsers can actually display things slightly differently than one another. So even if everything looks fantastic here, there's no reason not to hit send test email to me and have it sent to yourself. Let's see, going down the list of questions, add an agent to a property if that agent is not a full CRM paying member of Realnex. Absolutely. Um, so each user does like especially on the marketplace, you're able to still list your uh, listings on the marketplace without. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure on that. I'll have to check into that. But um, you can add different people to your account and company by clicking on My Settings, My Company. And this is actually where it's pulling that out of. People don't have to be CRM users at all to be able to use the, uh, the listing platform. So you can come in here and see the different people that are in your company. And you can assign different users by going to My Subscription and assigning people to the appropriate subscription there. Uh, how many contacts are in the Realnex community? What types of contacts are they? Um, so I don't have an exact number on the number of uh, people we have in the Realnex community, but I do know that for national sends, usually those end up going to about 35 to 40,000 contacts. And it's a mix. Most of them are going to be agents, but there are a number of, uh, of investors, of tenants in the system as well. Uh, so key decision makers on both the lease and sale side, but the vast majority of them are going to be agents just like probably most of you or most of you work with in some fashion. But uh, that's it's also going to differ based on what area you're choosing to send your e-blasts to. So specific, certain states are going to have more users than others. As of right now, because our listing platform was originally based in Nevada, Nevada is still going to be a, a, the largest of our markets as of right now, although that is quickly changing as we add more people into the system. So that's starting to fill out to be more like uh, more like U.S. average, where California is quickly overtaking uh, Nevada in that sense. New York's actually getting way up there. Florida quickly as well. So uh, because all of our users have access, uh, no matter which one of the platforms they use, they do have access to the marketplace. All of those users uh, have been added to the system. So anybody that's a, a user of Realnex uh, can opt in to receive all those emails, and that's happening quickly. So 
I don't have the numbers exactly right now, but Nevada is definitely the top one, 35 to 40,000 nationwide. Um, Nevada emails will usually go to 12 to 17,000. Although we've also combined our old buzz target list into this. I say old, but I mean our list from a week and a half ago. Um, which was definitely smaller than property line, but adds a number of different people that uh, wouldn't have received it just from the property line system as well. Uh, now, can other people in the company see my uploaded email lists? So only if they are company admins will they actually have access to see that information. So when you click on, let me just click on listing and go to my contacts. So from here, you're just going to see your own contacts and no one else in the system is at this time going to be able to see that as well. The same thing is going to go for listings and e-markets that you send out as well. So only company admins are going to have access to the, the different lists and so on. And when entering a listing, there isn't a choice for both for sale for, and lease or just available. Correct. So if you actually have a listing that is both for sale and for lease, just due to the, how the system is set up, you do need to create one for each of those. Uh, so we have one that's for sale and one that's for lease for the same listing here. So the, ultimately this is what it is going to end up looking like. And the reason for that is they have completely different pieces of information in them. Uh, when you're looking at a listing that is for sale, you have a for sale price, for example, whereas that is not the case for a for lease. And it's primarily due to not being able or just wanting to be able to sh display the information on, all on one screen here. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and then I'll take uh, more questions at the end. So feel more than free to, to type them away if you think of anything else on the previous sections or anything that I'm talking about as I go through. And I will get to all of those at the end of the next section, which is going to be about searching. So let me just, uh, I'm actually going to do this in a different account here. Okay, so I'm going to log in as Matt here as uh, my account is experiencing some issues with searches just due to my location and testing here. But so the search has gotten to by clicking on search on the left hand side, which will take you to the Realnex marketplace uh, search section. So when you're in the search, you'll see a number of different things. First off, along the top are going to be all of the featured listings that are in the system. So you can kind of use this to scroll through and see any featured listings, being able to uh, just see those right at a glance there. And at the bottom, you'll see any listings that show up in the search criteria that you've done. And by default right now, it is actually searching based on where you're currently located. So if you do want to change that, you can simply click on the X there. So everything's done by clicking on the blue tab on the left hand side, entering the criteria in and then hitting search. At the top, it'll show you how many listings it found in that with those specific criteria. So in this case, we've got 13,000 active listings for sale uh, right now, although that'll actually be increasing over the next couple days as well as we finish porting over the information from all of our different platforms. Uh, you can also use a keyword search at the top to search by either agent, company, or property name. So, for example, let's say we wanted to bring up all of my listings, we can just search by my name and it's going to show us just the for sale listings because right now the filter is set to for sale, although we can change that to search both for sale and for lease there as well and see the different listings appear here. You can also use that to, of course, search by company. Like for example, let's say we wanted to find all of the listings for MDL group. We can simply do that by doing exactly that here and we'll see all the listings based on the company here. Now, in addition to searching from the keyword search at the top, you can also use the search on the left-hand panel to search uh, by specific criteria. You can set how recently you want those listings to have been updated, so you don't want necessarily stale listings uh, by clicking all that would show you stuff that was two years ago, hasn't been touched since then. 
So we've got it set right now to be able to search 90 days, 60, and so on that you can see on your screen there. You can also search for one or more listing types, either uh, overarching types like multifamily or more in-depth types like specifically senior housing, assisted living, or garden or low-rise, mid-high-rise, and so on. You can also specifically do multifamily and then let's say office business parks only. And so those will just show up in there where you can remove them simply by clicking on the black X at the top right hand corner. Uh, you can also use the location search. When you click in the address, it's gonna ask if you want to allow it location access. And if you do that, it's able to then uh, know your location for that. You can then search by either region, uh, Central West, Pacific West, and so on. And as you hover over these, you'll see the different states that those apply to. Uh, you can do an address search, either a specific zip code, county, city, state, or zip, uh, or I believe it's actually a street is the other one. So for example, we can do Ellsworth Loop and search for all properties on South Ellsworth Loop in Queen Creek. Uh, and you can do multiple searches here as well, which are actually inclusive. So if you search this and 89298529 in Gilbert, it'll show us either all of them on South Ellsworth Loop or on Gilbert in Gilbert, Arizona, 85295. Uh, you can also do that by county, city, and state, and so on. You can also use the MSA search as well. So uh, we actually changed it to MSA CBSA, but it actually is CBSA, which is slightly different. Uh, it has a few more different um, markets that aren't wouldn't necessarily be included in an MSA search. So it kind of allows for more of the, uh, the small markets in addition to all the large markets, which are generally included in the MSA as well. Again, you can specify whether it's for sale or for lease, what the lease rate range that you want to search is, base size, building size, whether or not it's available. Um, and clicking on for sale or for lease will let you search on those types of criteria. So for lease is going to give you that type of information. For sale will be by price range, cap rate, and so on. You can also use this to search for investment wanted or space wanted, which is basically the opposite of a uh, of a property search. Instead of searching for properties, you're searching for wants based on a property that you either represent or are looking to represent to kind of see, you know, how many people there are in the system that are looking for that type of listing. So from here, you can also then save the search to be able to use it again later. So let's say I'm going to be doing searches for Ellsworth Loop Road for multifamily or office business parks on a regular basis. And I want to save that so I can actually Let's do a bigger search area. Let's go with Mesa, Arizona. Just so something actually will possibly show up. So you can hit save and it'll ask you for a search name. So Mesa AZ Office and Multifamily. When you do a saved search, you'll get two different options. Either notify me when new listings match this search which means that anytime someone adds a listing into the system, if it matches those search criteria, you will get an email letting you know that that listing was added. You can also use this to create a searchable want listing, uh, which are the same as when you go into the listing side of things and click add and choose a want, either space or investment wanted. So those will then be able to show up to other users who are searching for uh, the wants. So finally, you can then hit search and it'll show you all of the listings that match the specific search criteria. Now, in addition to searches like this, the, the default basic searches, you can also change to a map view and something that we've added to the system. First off, it'll show you any of those listings on a map, but you can actually also use this map to do a search. So for example, we can use the circle tool here and draw a circle on our map and it will clear the uh, previous location search and just search for all listings within that map. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger and more inclusive here. Uh, refresh real quick. So 
So then it'll show you all of the listings within that search uh, search radius. And of course, we can then go and say we only want to show multifamily properties in that search radius. My browser's been having a lot of issues this week. There we go. So now it's just searching for multifamily properties in that circle. And in addition, circle, you can also use the shape tool instead. Uh, this is especially useful if you have specific streets that are the boundaries of what you're wanting to search. So let's say we want to go here to there. And boom, it'll just show us any listings within that apparently Utah shaped uh, search pattern that we did there. Uh, you can also, when using the map view and click on search, there's a number of different overlays that you can add to it as well. So you can overlay specific business types. So if, for example, you wanted to show gas stations on this map, you can then click on the gas station overlay and it'll show the gas stations in the map view there. Uh, and it will actually show those different business types outside of the search area, um, as sometimes you do still want to know where gas stations are for, well, I kind of doubt furniture store. Well, no, if you have a furniture store, you do still want to see like how far they are away, even if they're not necessarily within that search. You can also overlay specific heat maps, such as population maps. Uh, age range maps age percentage, ethnicity maps, or race maps as it's called here, or income or housing and what, what type they are. So like housing total units in a specific location will give you a heat map based on that. Uh, you can also do route overlays for current traffic conditions as another option there, which can be definitely useful to see if you're uh, trying to find some place that's in a heavily traffic location. And then finally, in, uh, in addition to the search, you can also add specific listings to a watch list. Uh, this is what was originally called client folders in Property Line, and it allows you to save multiple properties into a list in order to uh, use those, uh, bring those up again later, or send those to your client. So if we go back to the list view here, or the uh, card view here, and we wanted to add this listing that we found in the map view. We can go to our watch list and simply drag and drop the listing into the uh, drag list here button there. Uh, of course, we can then let's actually reset our search just to find more. here and add more properties to our watch list. So each of these properties in the watch list are going to be able to be sent to other users as well. So you can either view your watch list by going into here or to actually go and send that watch list to your users, you go back into the portal and click on marketplace on the left hand panel there. And this is also where you can view your different saved searches that you've created here as well. But you can click on the pair of binoculars there and see the different watch lists that you have, when it was created, when the last time it was updated. So you can click here to manage the watch list to uh, remove any listings that you want from there or even go there to view the specific listings that are in there. And from here, you can also view it as a map of those listings. Or you can use this to email those listings to a client. So when you click on the email button, it has a quick email form at the top where you can put uh, I'm just making this up as I go. And then from here, you can either type in contact names directly or contact emails directly into here. Or you'll also have access to your contacts here where you can select from either my contacts or my company contacts. Again, that will only show up for, uh, uh, for people that are marked as a company administrator. And you can also have it filtered by specific private groups. So let's say we wanted to just 
show our retail contacts. And then we can just simply click on each of the users here and that will add them into the box there separated by a, uh, by a comma. So I'm just gonna send this to, let's say, Brittany and Jordan McBride. And hit send. So that will send that watch list out so they can view the different listings that are in that watch list at their, uh, at their convenience. All right, so at this point, I will take any uh, further questions. So we are getting to the end here of the hour. So if you do have further questions, by all means, uh, go ahead and type them in now. Uh, if we don't end up uh, getting to your question for whatever reason, just uh, definitely give a, a shout out to support by uh, going to realnext.com and clicking on the contact link at the top. Our number is also going to be there, as well as uh, you can always email us at support at realnext.com. Um, all right, do stale listings automatically delete? At this time, they don't, but that is something we have been discussing. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily delete, but their status would, uh, what we're discussing is their status actually changing. So if you have a thought on this one way or the other, right now they do not uh, go anywhere, and that's actually been our policy for years, but uh, we're a little bit torn on it as, you know, there's definitely good arguments on either side. So this is an area where make your voice heard with the feature requests. Um, if you think that they should absolutely go away, by all means, shoot us a feature request on that and let us know because uh, I'm not necessarily going to take sides on it here one way or the other, but I do personally have a preference, but I would rather remain, uh, you know, Switzerland in this one. Uh, there's also a question when you do a search in Arizona, why do featured listings from other states show on the top line? Uh, right now, the featured listings just shows all featured listings and does not take the search criteria into account. Um, like I said at the beginning, we actually, this is being uh, built from two different listing platforms coming together into one. And the way that you're asking makes me assume that you actually come from property line where it does those featured listings, uh, this, it does take the search into account there. Whereas the other listing service, BuzzTarget, did not, and it looks like we just aired on that side. But if, it, if it's something where there's enough uh, clamoring for it, we, we might actually absolutely change that. It's a matter of we had, you know, two different options uh, to choose from just in our own listing platforms and went with one over the other. But that's something I could definitely see uh, being modified as well down the road. Uh, and actually, if you do have thoughts on this right now, by all means, type them into the question panel as well, um, as I can definitely tally that and go to the development team with, uh, you know, with the webinar users, because, I mean, you guys are the ones that are really using the system. I mean, you uh, signed up and made sure that you could learn this stuff. So please, by all means, feel more than free to type your thoughts in there as well. Uh, let's see, when you input search criteria in the blue search tab and then add a word into the keyword search, will that further search your results? Yes. So the keyword search will only search within the results from the blue search tab on the left-hand side, which means if you do a, a search in a specific location and then type a search there, Bobby should have definitely brought up multiple listings, but it did not because it is only searching in Queen Creek and all of mine are actually listed in Santan Valley, Arizona instead. Uh, let's see. Okay, what source are you pulling your information for the map data layers? I actually don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure if Sarah has it handy. I know that it is from uh, a, a reliable data source. I don't know what year it's from, although it is something that was recently added to the system, so it should be as up-to-date as humanly possible, as that's only been around for about six months as of now. Um, I can definitely research that. I'll take down your name, and uh, that way I'll actually be doing the same webinar again next week. So I'll be prepared with that information by then, hopefully at the uh, very latest. Uh, is there an option to save your property search as a PDF? Not at this time, but I actually have heard that from a number of users as well, and that has come in as a feature request. So again, uh, definitely let us know if that is something that you would like to see. Um, although I don't necessarily know that, or I don't think that'll necessarily be necessary as that is a feature that did exist in the property line system uh, under the reports. So I think that that's just something we did not have time to do in this initial release. Uh, is there a way to export properties you have searched for in a PDF report? 
All right, so we definitely need to get on that. So I will uh, talk to the development team and let them know your thoughts on that, because at least two people on this webinar have mentioned exactly that. So uh, yeah, uh, how do I get to the client folders that were previously saved? So those, again, client folders are now called watch lists. So they should show up by clicking on Marketplace and clicking on the binoculars at the top. This is where any, um, any of your previous client folders will end up showing up now. If for whatever reason they do not, let us know and uh, we'll actually get those ported over for you. There are some that have not come over yet. We are still working on a bit of the, uh, the data from property line, but they should have, uh, for the most part, migrated at this point. If they have not, just uh, shoot us an email at support at realnext.com and let us know, and we'll get to working on that for you as soon as humanly possible. Uh, can we display the lease rate as uh, square foot per month instead of square foot per year? We are working on that as well. Uh, the idea is to actually give you a toggle option on your search parameters. So the search for, um, it's actually gonna be mainly for lease information, for the lease rate, uh, right now it's minimum rate per year, maximum rate per year, but we actually are going to be adding the ability to toggle your search criteria as well as your filter criteria on what shows up to square foot per month or square foot per year. That's something that's it's very regionally different in this country. Uh, places like New York have a tendency to go square foot per year. Chicago, I believe, does as well. But I think pretty much every West Coast city does do square foot per year. Uh, uh, dollar per square foot per month, and personally, I've always lived in the uh, the Western U.S., so I, I'm I'm with you guys on that. One. But personally, I think the best option is to give you both options available, and that is what we're currently working on for that. When you do a map search and insert a circle, how do you erase or delete the circle? So once you've done that map search with the circle. Uh, you can first off move it, but if you do need to 100% get rid of that, I uh, don't think that you can actually, I, I apologize, I, I like there are some things that I just have not delved into nearly enough here. I'm gonna have to take a guess and say that clear is gonna, uh, well, let's see if you just do this. All right, I hate to say it, but I think the only way to actually completely get rid of that as of right now is by refreshing, which will automatically clear that circle. So I just hit F5 on my keyboard. And now if I go back to the search, so I'll actually have to see about getting a uh, delete button for that added in as I, or I could just be missing something entirely. I'll work with the development team to see what we can do on that and see if that's something we can add to the system here at a later date as well. Okay, well, that was fantastically perfect timing. Those are all the questions that we have for right now. Oh, how do we add a specific mile radius to the search? Uh, that's not something that you can do as of right now, but that is something that we've heard uh, from a number of customers using the system so far. So um, I'm working with the development team already to, to see about that or at least be able to, uh, yeah, so that way when you go into here, it'll actually show, you know, you're at one mile, 1 1.5, 2, and so on. But it just isn't something that actually ended up making it into the release, but that is something we actually have intentions for being able to do in the near future as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll actually put another tick in people requesting that. So good timing. It's uh, exactly 10 o'clock Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. So we've gone the exact hour. Uh, we'll actually be doing this again next week. And also uh, I'll be splitting this up into a few different videos as well as uploading the full uh, recorded webinar to our knowledge base at a, uh, in the near future here. So you'll be able to click on knowledge at the top of realnext.com and a number of articles have already been created specifically for the new marketplace, how to create a watch list, formerly client folders, how to mess with the photos, orders and so on, how to save searches, get notified and so on. So we're actually adding a lot more to the marketplace section than we ever had before. Um, primarily because we were kind of waiting on the new marketplace to be released. That way we didn't have to do the uh, do all the uh, knowledge base articles on uh, property line and then have to just totally recreate everything. So we're actually going through this week and will be for the until it's done really uh, going through and adding all of the knowledge base articles, any videos that we've recorded on this and so on to help you out with the system. 
So I do want to thank all of you for joining me. It was nice to see a nice, really lively uh, uh, webinar today. I have a lot of questions and hopefully we can continue to improve the system, make it uh, everything that you do need it to be. And yeah, uh, Sarah, if you have anything else, otherwise uh, here. Hey Bobby, I do believe that the map data layers all come from Google Maps data. Um, I'm 99% sure of that, and if that changes, I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll email out to the people who are on this um, webinar um, once I double check that. Anyway, that's all that I have. Um, we have posted some new webinars up on um, our homepage. So on the homepage, click the blue webinar button, and you'll get to see the full list. So check back there often, and thanks to Bobby for all of his help with um, our new Marketplace platform, and we hope you guys get a chance to uh, play around on it, and um, get to know its awesome functions. So we will see you next time. Thanks, and bye.